Robo las miradas siempre al pasar Quemando llantitas por el bulevar Recuerdo el nogal es lo que nos pasó What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been like a month or so, if that, you know, since I last made a video for you guys. And honestly, you guys didn't miss much. I didn't have nothing going on. Um, the last video I made, you know, that was the last time I touched the truck. So, you guys haven't missed nothing at all. So lately, I've been thinking on um, how to make my truck stand out a little bit more. Obviously, you know, once you lower a truck and put wheels on it, they all look the same, right? But me, I'm trying to make it stand out a little bit more, especially, you know, around my area so uh, I figure you know what's the best way to do it and we're actually gonna be going lower on the truck so as of right now my truck sits at a 410 drop don't know if you guys know that I know there's a couple new people on the channel appreciate you guys for subscribing but um, for those of you that don't that do know it sits at a 410 drop so um, I want to go a little lower because ever since I put the 24s on it kind of raised the truck up a little bit I want to say like an inch or so if that you know but um, I do want to bring it back down again, but at the same time, making it lower. So here I picked up some uh, two inch drop spindles. So we're going to be installing them in this video. And uh, after the install, it should sit at a 610 drop. So uh, let me go ahead and show you guys. We're going to measure and see how tall the truck is right now. And uh, then we'll measure again once the video is done and see the difference. All right, guys. So this is the truck, as you guys, most of you guys know. Uh, like I said, 410 drop. 10 in the rear, 4 in the front. I know I keep on repeating it, but I know I'm going to get a lot of people asking me, what drop, what drop are you on in the comments? So, I already answered you a couple of times before you guys even ask. But anyways, um, yeah, this is how she sits right now. Um, like I said, with the 24, she got raised up a little bit. So right now, she's like, I would say the top of the tire is like lined up with the fender right here. So yeah, like I said, it's lined up with the fender right here. So right now it's perfect. I don't have any issues when I turn all the way. I don't have any issues with, uh, with the tire hitting the, the fender or nothing like that. Uh, as you guys know, I'm also, I also have a firewall tub and I got front wheel tubs. So that's not going to be an issue. I guess the issue we probably will run into is when we drop it lower and we turn, we're probably going to be hitting the fender. Don't know if I'll probably roll those out a little bit. Um, don't know. Like I said, we probably won't deal with it until we run into that problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and measure it. And it kind of sucks because my truck's sitting on this uh, little hole here on top of some wood. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and measure it from the wood to get more accurate reading, you know, from where it stands. But so right now, truck sits at 29 inches and a half. So if everything goes smooth and the, you know, the draw spindles actually give me two inch drop, it should it should sit at 27 and a half if I'm not mistaken so uh, also for those of you that don't know I'm running a 275 30 tire 24 inch obviously I know I get that question asked a lot so I kind of want to answer them before but yeah let's get to this and uh, hopefully it's not too bad of a job All right, guys, so I already went ahead and opened the box just because right now I'm kind of by myself, so it's hard to record and, you know, just do things overall, which require, you know, two hands at the same time. So, anyways, Cochinos don't think wrong. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, here we got them. Uh, obviously, this one's D for driver's side. Then we got the P for passenger side. So, honestly, they don't look too bad. And um, for those of you guys that do know, this kind of looks like it has the finish, almost like the old school DJM lower control arms. Has the same, you know, finish to it, it looks like. Now I think DJM stuff is all black. Before it used to be this color. I think my control arms are this color. I'll go ahead and show you guys right now. But. So in my part, I think they're going to look good because they're going to match. But uh, yeah, not too bad, guys. I think I paid, uh, what was it, two hundred and three bucks something like that shipped to my house so it's not too bad two inch draw spindles let me go ahead and take you guys to my truck see if they match okay so here we got the lowers and the uppers obviously but uh you can see it has the same kind of finish to it obviously those don't have a, as much black as the control arms but that's what i was trying to explain to you guys 
kind of looks like it has the same finish. Although you won't be able to see the spindle from, you know, back there, I guess, because rotors in the way, you know, all this crap. But, you know, I was just curious to see if it was the same kind of stuff. But you can see there, it almost matches, which is no big deal, really. Just thought I'd bring that up. But, uh, yeah, these are also DJM, for those of you guys that are curious. Uh, they're, I guess, needed when you go five or six inches or more in the front. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It's been a while since I ordered them. But I uh, haven't got the truck aligned yet just because I knew I was going to go lower in the front. So there was no need to spend money now or then. And then having to take it to get realigned after the spindle drop. So I just waited it out. And now we're going to do it all together. So let's get started. All right, guys. So to take this thing off, it's super easy. I think I showed you guys last time when I did the, um, the cam locks. And then I also replaced the sway bar links right there. Um, or not the sway bar links, the tie rod ends, my bad. But um, it's pretty simple. You unhook this, usually goes right here on top. Just take it out. You have a 10 millimeter here holding on the brake line to your spindle. You got a remover caliper, which is a uh, 18 mil. It has two bolts in the rear. Take it off, um, put it on top of your control arm. And then on the bottom, bottom nut holding on your, um, your spindle, which is also the lower bar joint. I'm using a 15 16 and then for the tie rod end here it's going to be a three quarter for me these were swapped out a couple I want to say eh, a month ago so obviously it's a little different size um, then right here upper control arm which is also the upper ball joint it's gonna be an 18 so um, before you get started on all that though what I like to do I like to place the jack underneath the control arm right here kind of putting some pressure on it I'll show you guys here in a minute what I'm talking about, but you want to put a jack underneath it. That way, when you start taking everything apart, nothing tries to come at you, you know? It's easier if I show you guys. I guess I'll just show you guys what I'm trying to tell you, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So 18 mil, three quarters, 15, 16, 10 millimeter. That's pretty much all you're gonna need. And maybe a hammer. Uh, sometimes these, uh, upper and lower ball joints don't like to come out so easy so you might need to smack around them like somewhere right there i showed you guys in my last video but uh, that's pretty much all you're gonna need so uh let me show you guys what i'm talking about the jack all right so this is what i meant by putting a, uh the jack underneath the control arm i like to put mine right underneath the the shock where the shock mounts up that way you know there's not a lot of pressure on that spindle when you go to take it off just try to center it my driveway sucks but Try to do the best. So basically, you just want to do that. Just so you, when you take off, when you start taking things apart, that spring or whatever, don't try to come at you. So that's what I was trying to tell you guys by the jack underneath the control arm. Just to put some pressure on that spring. That way you don't go boom. You guys get the point. <laughs> All right, guys, it's super easy, just like that. A couple of nuts, and it came off. And that's how she sits right now. If you wouldn't have that jack underneath, that lower control arm would probably try to go down because of the spring, the way the spring tries to push it down. So always make sure and use the jack underneath the control arm if you're gonna remove the spindle. But there we have them. This is a new one, obviously. You guys know, that's the old one. So you gotta remove this, uh, the wheel hub, the wheel bearing, whatever you want to call it. Um, those three bolts right there. I believe they're 15s. Um, if you guys want to have a good impact, I would recommend using a vice. Unless, you know, you guys get creative. You guys can do it whatever way you guys want. Um, I just know sometimes it could be a... I'm not going to say that way. <laughs> they could be stubborn. So, uh, in my case, I'm going to try to give them... A go with an impact and see how it goes. Hopefully, I don't need a vice because I really don't have one. I would need to go over to my dad's house, but uh, let's get to it and see if we can do it. All 
All right, so just like that, it's done, ready to go. Uh, make sure you torque them down to spec, though. I didn't show that in the video, but you do want to torque them down to spec. I know it's a little hard to do because if you're like me, you don't have a vice to put that thing on. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it tries to spin on you, so um, it gets a little tricky, but um, yeah, now we're ready to put it, put it back on. And it's super easy, guys. Honestly, if I'm not, re if I wasn't recording, I would say each side anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, if that, each side. So I want to say between both of them, both sides, uh, now nah, we're in 30 minutes at the most, honestly. So, uh, yeah, that was all ugly. Okay. But this one looks a lot nicer. So let's get to it. Show you guys what I got done. Both sides are done, and there's a new piece obviously right there. Uh, you can see it kind of matches the DJM parts. The bottom one's pretty filthy, but the top one you can see it kind of has the same color to it, which, like I said, don't really matter. Just wanted to show you guys that, but um, yeah, from the looks of it, to me, it looks like this whole assembly got moved up a little bit. I guess the two inches that we're looking to get. Because compared to how I was before, this whole assembly was down here farther when I first started. Or when I had the stock one back on. The stock uh, spindle. So, from the looks of it, it looks like it got moved up. Which makes sense. Because obviously we're going to be um, hiding the tire two more inches up in the fender well right there. But, uh, I know that looks pretty hideous. It's my first time, guys. If you guys haven't watched it, you know, it was my first time ever doing this. Cutting into the firewall, so... I know I'm not too happy with the results either. That seam sealer just looks like crap. But um, I don't know. I'm thinking about taking, stripping it all down again. The seam sealer, the paint, and uh, just redoing the seam sealer. Probably get some better stuff. Because right now it looks like kindergarten went in there and just, you know, did a school project. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's how we learned though. You know, that's my first time doing it. And that's how I, obviously, uh, how I learned. Next time, don't try, to, don't try to go the cheaper route. Try to use a little better stuff. This stuff looked like it was old, so it was just real tacky. But uh, anyways, that'll be for another video. But yeah, this is what we got. So let me go ahead and put on the wheels and show you guys how they look. day last night i got done pretty late uh but you guys saw wheels are on and you guys did see what happened kind of sucks uh this thing kind of broke off the clip right there um i've always done it this way never once have i had that problem where it gets stuck i know you guys are probably gonna tell me in the comments you should have gone forward but honestly i couldn't because the truck was a lot closer to my razor here and the razor is obviously pushed all the way against the wall back there. And then in front of the razor, I got toolboxes and compressors and whatnot. So, I know I posted a small clip on my uh, TikTok. And a lot of people were commenting, you should have gone forward. You dumbass, whatever, you know. Obviously, they don't know my situation. Why I couldn't go forward. But, you know, I'm trying to explain to you guys now before, you know, someone comments down in the comments. And says, you should have gone forward. I couldn't. You know, it is what it is, though. It gives me something to work on. I don't care, you know. Sometimes you got to break things in order to keep you busy. So, oh well. Should be a simple fix though. Uh, worst case, we'll have to buy a new bumper pad. Which, you know, it's probably needed because it's all scuffed down at the bottom. But uh, anyways, enough about that. We're going to go ahead and measure. Uh, I believe it was 29 and a half last time we measured. So, um, let's see. So, let's go around the middle. So right now she sits at 27. 
before it was 29 and a half, so they actually brought it down two inches and a half. Right? But you know what? At the same time, it looks like the wheels are kind of cambered up top. So maybe once we, once I take it to get a line and they straighten them out, maybe they'll go back up to 27 and a half. So uh, I guess we'll remeasure it once I get it in line, which right now I can tell you the wheels kind of sit in. Don't really like that, but oh well. So yeah, guys, honestly, I will say no more than an hour and 30 minutes to install if you know what you're doing, obviously. Um, my, videos, my videos are probably going to get a little slower from here on just because um, I really don't have much to do on the truck no more. Um, all the little things, I guess, are done. Um, I still got to work on the interior. I still want to do double sunroofs, you know, and uh, obviously need the paint job. Um, you know, but those are all big things, I guess, now. So it also takes a lot more time, a lot more money out of my pocket. And if you guys know me, I'm not made of money. So I just kind of do things as I go. And I try to do the things myself so I can save some money. So um, honestly, my videos are going to get a little slower. Uh, I am thinking about picking up a new project. That way, you know, I can kind of keep on having videos for you guys every other week or so. Because I know it's been almost a month since I last posted a video for you guys. But uh, like I said, if it's things I can kind of show you guys, we'll try to upload a video here and there. But uh, just so you guys know why I'm not really uploading so often no more. So that's going to be it. Uh, we do pick up something new. I'll be introducing it to the channel. But uh, other than that, hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Any questions you guys have, drop it down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Robo las miradas siempre al pasar. Quemando llantitas por el bulevar. Recuerdo en Nogales lo que nos pasó.